Hello Possum, Stramer here, Hardcore Castle. Just rescuing the last of the chickens. I got the pigs down already. Come on, down we come. Yay. Now it's looking more like a castle in a bailey. A bit of livestock wandering around. Right, I've just got everything together. And what we're going to work on today is this, the Great Tower. We're going to get it finished. I hope. Or we're going to die trying. My inventory's all loaded up. Oh, not quite. My inventory's almost all loaded up. I'm ready to go. Not without its risks. There were plenty of deaths on building sites in medieval times, building castles or cathedrals or towers or whatever where people fell from a great height and died. Not just the workers, but also uh, the designers, the architects, the overseers. It was not a safe thing. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of our spiral staircase in place. Sorry, my brain. <laughs> And I've got to keep an eye on the levelling courses. They all have to go in. And I've got to not fall off. And as promised, we're going to talk about keeps and donjons. So let's start with names. Look at a castle and what's the word that normally springs to most people's minds? Chances are it's keep. But where does that word come from and can we really apply it to a castle or even to part of a castle? If you talk to a medieval academic, most of them will say, please don't. It's too generic and inaccurate. Use the word donjon instead, which gives rise to the further question of what is a donjon? Some people say it's a tower or specifically a great tower, but that's not strictly true. It can be a tower, but it doesn't have to be. As I've said before, it was the Normans who introduced castle building to the British Isles and they in turn got it from the Middle East. Because it came to England from Normandy, the majority of specific names for parts of a castle are Norman in origin. Machicolation, Barbican, Crenel, Donjon. A donjon was the residence of the Lord, derived from the Latin dominus, meaning Lord, and from the extension dominarium, meaning the rooms or residence of the Lord. A donjon has to have a residential aspect. Think of our modern word domicile from the Latin domicilium. If the Lord and his family are not living in your great tower, then it isn't a donjon. If they did live in a great tower, or any tower for that matter, it would be a donjon, but they wouldn't be very high up. I can tell you from going up and down that spiral staircase umpteen dozen times, it gets really old really fast. Someone rich and important enough to build a castle and a great tower would not tolerate the inconvenience of masses of stairs. And those upper floors are going to be of much more use to the guards on lookout who are also tough enough to walk all that way up and down. So that's a donjon. But what about the word keep? Keep came from the Anglo-Saxon word keeper, meaning a basket or vessel. The Anglo-Saxons didn't have keeps. They didn't have castles. They had fortified towns and settlements. When they used keep, they were describing what they saw the Normans putting up all over the country. And initially, that was the big square keeps, or as the Normans called them, donjons, because at that early stage, they definitely did have that residential aspect. Bamborough Castle in Northumbria is a good example. There was an Anglo-Saxon stronghold there, a settlement with noble residents and wooden fortifications. Then the Normans came along, booted out the yawl, knocked it all down and plonked a big square building on it, which the Normans called a donjon because the new yawl lived in it and the locals called a keep. And then, just to confuse the issue, there are dungeons. We know what a dungeon is, but it isn't a donjon. Donjons were not places of imprisonment. They were, as I said, residences. If you wanted to imprison someone, you threw them into the cage in the bailey or into the oubliette or even into a lower storeroom, which was often made of vaulted stone. And doesn't that start to sound familiar when we modern people think about dungeons? 
Important people were, as we've seen, imprisoned in a reasonable room in a tower or even in nice apartments and treated well, not in what we think of as dungeons. The word dungeon was a Middle English spelling of donjon. Remember, English spelling wasn't standardised for a very long time. It took quite some time for dungeon to be associated with the idea of imprisonment. And I wonder if that came from a misunderstanding of the specificity of the word donjon. That it was not the castle as a whole where people were dragged to be locked up in one way or another, but rather the residents in that castle. So where does all this leave our great tower? It's great because it's the biggest tower in the castle, just as a great hall was the biggest hall. It could hold a lot of different things. It might be a donjon if there's a residence in it. The White Tower at the Tower of London was a donjon, with the four towers at the corners just being towers. There are plenty of other examples too, but there are also a lot of other towers that aren't donjons, including really tall ones, including great towers. This great tower isn't a donjon because there's no residence in it. The Lord and his family have that separate apartment above the parlour. The Norman word for tower was tour, from Latin turis. The Anglo-Saxons had tor or tour, also derived from turis, but they also had plenty of other words for towers, depending on where they were, whether or not they had staircases in them, and what type of staircase, what they were made of, what they were used for, and so on. A lot of these words have vanished, although some remain, such as steeple. So where does that leave us? And where does that leave my tower? The Normans may have conquered the British Isles, but in the long run it was the English language that was triumphant. That said, Donjon is accurate, Keep is not, and my great tower is not a Donjon. And there's the great tower from the Inner Bailey. I am so happy with that. Part of me says put another couple of extra floors on it, and part of me says no, it's fine. I mean, you get great towers that are massively taller than the rest of the castle. But, yeah, that's within the parameters of, of reasonableness, what I've got there. It's about 40 metres high, plus the crenellations on top. And doing the crenellations was terrifying. Now, I have started putting a little bit of things in the great tower, not a lot. Mm. If we come over here, I've made some changes in here. So... This goes up, as you know, to the Lord's Apartments. But we now have a little walkway. This one goes over here. And we can come down here and into the Great Hall. So that's the family's way of getting into the Great Hall. Or they can come out of their apartment, come here, and into their private chapel. This is not finished. These are largely holding blocks and there's a lot more decoration and stuff to go in here but it's a start. It gives us an idea and yes I know this window faces west. That doesn't matter. Technically it should face east but as with churches and if you have a look at my video on making a church which I will link in the description. If your chancel and your altar could not be at the east end of your chapel, your church, whatever, you just declared the end they were at to be the east end. So even though that window faces west, in terms of the chapel, that's the east. Now that's the only thing that I have started to add to the tower. There's guards rooms and all sorts of other things. But I have also, if we run all the way over here, because we've got the private chapel of the Lord and Lady, but if we come up these stairs, we've got a tiny chapel for the servants. They can all just crowd in here and stand and take communion. And yeah, there's faces west as well, but that's east. It's okay. And their little windows double as arrow loops. So that's the Great Tower. Now there's still I think one or two days left for the banner competition. So have a look in the description again for the for the rules for that. And the winning banner will become the colours of the castle and then I can start to decorate. And the results of the poll are in. I will be going to the nether. I want to say a big 
big thank you to everyone who voted for me not to go. I don't want to go, but I'm going. It's that old political adage of don't launch the inquiry unless you already know the outcome. I suspected I'd be going two to one, go to the nether. But we at least have the Great Tower finished. I'm not saying I'll go to the nether next week. I might put some more professions into the towers or we may go we'll have to see but my pinky finger is now worn out from holding shift from making the tower there are end cards on the screen to some more of my videos and if you've made it this far tell me where you would put an alchemist would you put it in the base of the great tower or would you put it in one of the other towers okay bye